Hello, beautiful people. I missed you guys so much. I am so excited to be back here. And we're going to take today and talk about camera settings for music photography. The birds are chirping. It's a beautiful day. And like, why not talk about settings? Four years ago, which I cannot believe, I uploaded this video and I still to this day get a lot of questions about camera settings and I figured it's been four years so let's update this. Let's talk a little bit about things I've changed since then and get you guys some perfect settings for music photography. So let's jump into it. If you watch other videos about camera settings when it comes to concert photography or really just any photography, you get a lot of people talking about ISO, shutter speed, aperture. Obviously, those are like your big main settings. But at the same time, that doesn't really answer all of the questions. There's a lot more that goes into this. So I want to talk about everything today, but let's hit the big ones first. Let's talk about the easiest one first, aperture. For me, I always leave my lenses wide open. I am always looking for the maximum amount of light that I can get into a lens. So I just leave it wide open. So I have a lot of f2.8 lenses and f1.8, 1.4. If I am shooting with any of those lenses, I leave them wide open. It gives me a constant. I always know that that's what it's set at. It's just easy for me to work around and also just like leave one thing constant that I don't have to change it. I don't have to worry about it. There is rarely a time that I ever need to change it or want to change it. The only time that I do is if I need less light. Like if I'm at a festival, I'll often shoot in like four, 5.6, something like that to give me less light when it's really bright outside. The only other time that I change it is if I know that I have a lens that is sharper at a certain aperture. Every single lens that you will have will be like sharpest at a certain point. You can play around with it and really figure out what that is for you and your lens. For example, I have a 51.4. I love shooting with it at 1.4, but it is really soft at 1.4. So I rarely shoot with it that wide open. Um, and also it's kind of like hard in general to make sure that you have pinpoint accuracy at a 1.4, like the eye will be in focus, maybe the nose won't be. Um, but that lens I know is soft. So I rarely shoot wide open with that. Those are very specific scenarios. But when it comes to me and pretty much all of my lenses, I shoot wide open. That is my tip for that. That's my reasons why I would almost always recommend it. It just helps you give one thing that you don't have to worry about changing the settings on and you just always know that you're getting the most amount of light that you can. Second easiest for me to talk about is shutter speed. I almost always have my camera at 1 over 250. So 1 over 250 is kind of a sweet spot for me. When I am shooting fast moving bands and musicians, it gives me a little bit of blur. And I like that. It gives the band a little bit of motion that they look really active still on stage. I understand that not everyone wants that. So if you're looking to like really freeze action, I would look at something of like a shutter speed of one over 320 or so. When I turn on my camera, it is always preset at one over 250. It's just really where I feel comfortable. It's also a little bit slower than a lot of people like to shoot when it comes to like activities. So I'm getting a little bit more light than normal. I allow that for myself so I can get the most light that I can. And then if it's too bright, I can always change it. It's just a sweet spot for me. So I almost always leave my camera settings there. Okay, we're getting to trickier settings. ISO. So this really depends on your camera. And I hate saying that like something depends on what you're comfortable with and like what your gear is. But it really does. ISO is also one of the things that like really depends on your editing style. I know that I can have a lower ISO 
and like really make up for it in my editing. That being said, you really want to make sure that your photos are exposed properly in camera. And the reason that I say that, and I wish that I learned this earlier, is when you bump up your exposure in Lightroom, you're adding so much more grain to your photo than you would have if you just increased your ISO. So increasing your exposure in editing is worse than bumping up your ISO. I promise you, it seems like, it's like, oh, I can save it, I can come back to it, I can make it brighter. Do it in camera because you're gonna be able to adjust and like fix that grain a little bit easier in Lightroom. It's not gonna show up as much when you correctly expose in your camera versus like bumping up the exposure in Lightroom. Say hello to my kitty that just jumped in the window. <laughs> anyway, so it does depend on your camera. It does depend on like your editing and what you're comfortable with. Um, but I will say I shoot with now both a Z series camera and a DSLR. So this is a mirrorless camera and this camera can handle ISO a lot better than this camera can. So I've gotten used to fixing in post processing and editing what these pictures look like because I'm less comfortable bumping this one up to like an ISO of like 3200, 6400. This camera, I'm pretty much comfortable going anywhere. This camera is a little bit better at handling low lighting in general. These are both full frame cameras, so these will handle like dark lighting a lot better than a crop sensor will and will handle that ISO a little bit better as well. So with my cameras, I actually have a pretty low ISO that I set my cameras at, and that's because a lot of the venues that I shoot tend to have like a bright spotlight or like front light for the band. For me, my camera is mostly set at an ISO of 1600 and then I adjust up or down from there, but I've been shooting a lot more at 1250 just because the venues that I've been shooting at have been really bright. But it really depends on your gear. Obviously, if I switch my lenses from a 2.8 to a 1.8 lens, I adjust my ISO to counter that because I'm not changing my shutter speed throughout the night or throughout the shoot. So if I change lenses and my aperture changes, I am adjusting my ISO to counter that to either allow more light or less light depending on what that lens needs. I feel like that was long-winded, but I would say set your camera at like an ISO of 1600 and then go from there. See if you need more lighting or less lighting depending on your venue. Okay, let's talk about my favorite tip, which is shutting off auto white balance. I don't know why I hate auto white balance so much, but this is a tip in my other video that I got a lot of comments and feedback on that people hadn't heard before. So I'm really happy about this tip and I'm glad that I shared it four years ago, but I would suggest shutting off your auto white balance. I would suggest putting in a Calvin temperature that is like hard coded into your camera and set at that. This really, really helps me batch edit my photos and make sure that you see the color difference throughout the set. I work with a few bands that have different light settings throughout their set. So when I'm shooting a whole set, I want to show the variety. I don't want every single picture to look the same when it's color based. So having a Calvin temperature allows me to easily batch edit my photos and I can adjust to the skin tones that I want and you'll still see that color in the background show through if that makes sense. So for me to have that it just really really helps my editing process because I'm not going through and adjusting the white balance for each photo. I know what my white balance was set at so I know what my skin tones I want them to look like and then I adjust one photo and I can apply that setting throughout the rest of my photos 
and I still get the color difference of what lights were actually changing, but the people, the front of the like settings of how they look, looks the same. I'm not the most technical photographer, if you can believe that. Uh, but that's how I understand it and how I use it. And it's just made my editing process so much easier. It's just so much cleaner for me. I know what I'm looking for. And my skin tones actually look a lot better because I adjust for kind of like the skin tone, skin tone coloring that I want, if that makes sense. So this is how my camera is set and it's always, always, always set at this 5260 Calvin. Um, both of my cameras are set at that. Um, if you are shooting on a different camera, so like a Canon or a Sony, their like base colors are different than what Nikon is. So I would say that this is something that you should play around with and adjust. The way that I found this number is this is kind of like a true tone or what looks true tone to me for skin tones. So go outside in natural lighting, properly expose a person and set your Calvin to what it looks like their skin tone should be. So it might be too pink, it might be too green. And as you adjust that number, you'll see that kind of like come out in the picture, I would set it to whatever looks best to you, whatever like vibe style you're looking for. And I set it to that and that stays as that. I never adjust it. It is set on both of my cameras and it just makes things so much easier. So if you haven't tried it, I would highly suggest trying it. Okay, so let's talk through a lot of very specific camera settings that you may or may not have to change on your camera. Um, these are kind of built in and I feel like I get a lot of questions on these. Not a lot of videos cover them, but they're very like specific small settings. First, always shoot raw if you can. I feel like this one does get covered a lot. There are like memes and jokes and obviously like Jared Poland talks about always shoot raw. Raw, you can just edit a lot easier. Shoot raw, you'll be very happy, especially if you're starting out and you're shooting raw, that you can come back to those photos when you're a little bit more talented at editing and maybe adjust them to be better. So always shoot raw, you just have a lot more capabilities there. That being said, there are a lot of settings that don't really matter if you're shooting raw. One of the things that doesn't matter when you're shooting raw is picture control. So I have picture control on my Nikon cameras. I'm sure that this is a setting for other cameras. I just don't know what that setting looks like or is called. But this is a setting that like shows you something like vivid, standard, auto, and what it is is like a auto applied setting to your photos um, so you can see what the thumbnails look like. So it's kind of like an in-camera editing, but it does not apply to your raw photos. So if you're shooting raw, it is really just like what it looks like in thumbnail. This setting I think trips up a lot of new photographers because photographers will be looking at their images on their camera and be like, oh, this is so bright. You know, it looks great. It looks sharp. It looks this, that, and the other. But then I import it into Lightroom and it's really bland. Well, you might have set your camera accidentally to vivid and your colors are going to pop more. It's going to look brighter. It's going to look bolder in camera in that thumbnail or if you just export it as like a JPEG. But that's not what the raw photo looks like. So you still have to edit that raw photo for it to look like that. If you are uncomfortable with editing, don't want to edit at all, this might be something where you are just shooting in JPEG and set your camera to auto, set it to vivid, that you can really like kind of just focus on the photo, focus on your eye and like how you shoot and you don't have to really worry about the post-processing. That might be something that you want to try if you're really uncomfortable with editing, but if you set this in your camera you're gonna see a difference between raw and what is 
showing up in that thumbnail in your camera. So just a little caveat there, something to be aware of, um, but it doesn't really matter what you set it as if you're shooting raw, but you need to be aware that there's going to be a difference. Hopefully that made sense. That's picture control. Is that a helicopter? The other thing that doesn't really matter to me when I'm shooting in RAW is metering. Now this does matter because metering is what is affecting your light meter in camera. So if you're looking at your light meter in your camera settings, in your viewfinder, to change all of your other settings like ISO, your metering does matter, but it doesn't like change your picture, if that makes sense. I had to close the window. The dogs were getting crazy outside. Anyway, spot metering is what I use. Spot metering will help me figure out what I am actually focusing on. What is like the value of that? Is it too bright? Is it too dark? Um, this can often be tricky because sometimes I'll completely blow out the background and make it too bright. Sometimes I make the background way too dark, but I am almost always just focusing on the person that the background doesn't matter that much to me. So I use spot metering. That being said, this will be something if you are using like aperture priority or any of the priority modes or an auto mode, this will change your settings. This will like have an impact on your photos. But if you are using manual mode, metering really only impacts your light meter for you to get a visual look at what you need to change, if that makes sense. So if you are using any of the priority or an auto mode, I would dive into metering and like what each one means so you can like properly learn how to use it. I don't do that. So I really just stick to spot metering and leave it there so I can just focus on what my camera is focused on. Okay, last but not least, let's talk about autofocus. So I always recommend autofocus. I cannot see very well. So I am always wearing contacts or glasses when I am at a shoot and I can't really rely on my eyesight that much. So for me, manual focus is out the window. I just cannot use it. If you're a manual focus person, all for you, but I love and rely on my autofocus. There is no shame in that. The cameras are so smart. Lean into your autofocus. It'll be great. But there are a few settings that I use to kind of like help clarify my autofocus. So first things first is autofocus continuous. If you are shooting anything that is moving, I highly recommend continuous autofocus. This is helping your camera recognize that your subjects are moving. That being said, I have definitely done a lot of shoots with like singer songwriters that they are in front of a microphone and they are not moving. In some of those cases, I will switch my camera over to that single autofocus. Again, I'm not sure what these settings are in other cameras, but in Nikon, they are single and continuous. Oh my gosh, you can't see this. Probably can't read this at all. Anyway, I use continuous 99% of the time. I am rarely switching over to the single autofocus. The single autofocus is really just like that thing right there that is stand still. I want to photograph that. It's rarely going to be your case in music photography. So I highly recommend just continuous. Your camera knows that your subject is moving and it's helping like anticipate a little bit of that movement. Release mode is the second part of this. So I always use single frame release mode, not to be confused with single autofocus. These are named very similar, I think, on Nikon. Again, don't know what they're named anywhere else, but I use single frame continuous. So that's, that's what I use. 
a single frame is just when I hit the shutter, it is taking one photo. Now, a lot, a lot of people use the continuous low or continuous high where when you take a picture, you're getting like three photos or two photos, or like depending on like how long you hold down your shutter, you're getting all these photos. I don't do that. I take a photo and then I reset my autofocus and I take another photo. This has helped me not overshoot at shows because I used to take hundreds, hundreds of photos per set. And it's just, it's too much. It's too much to edit. So I moved over to single frame and this has really helped me in just being like, there is one photo that I want to take right now. This is the one photo I want to capture. If you want to change this, I would say do a continuous low especially if you're photographing a band that's moving around a lot and you want to make sure that you capture that. That being said, when I use the continuous frames, I often have a lot of images that are soft or out of focus because if the band moved a lot, you know, I captured it. I was able to snap those shots, but they might not be sharp. So for me, it's worthwhile for me to reset and actually focus and shoot something that's really sharp than have like images that I'm not going to use because I'm going to throw them out because they're soft. So that's kind of like the give and take that I get. If you are fine with your soft photos or you really want to like capture all of the movement or you're scared of missing out on certain shots, definitely use the continuous. That way you can capture more. Um, but I like the sharpness. So I'm going to stick to that single so I can reset every time and make sure that it's sharp each time that I shoot. And last but not least, your autofocus mode. So in my camera, I have single point autofocus. You have your dynamic autofocus. You have a few others with the new um, Z series cameras that are like people, cats, uh, <laughs> pets, or just like everything, everything. Like you figure out what you want me to focus on kind of thing. I always, always, always have this on single point autofocus. If you have this setting as single point, you will have to change your autofocus point throughout the set that you're shooting. So for me, when I am shooting, I often have my thumb on my like little wheel here because I am moving that autofocus point to make sure that I am capturing the musician's eye. So it is a lot of work because I'm changing that constantly. I am always looking for a new angle and a new motion. Um, and I'm just like resetting it pretty much every photo that I take. So it is a lot of work if you're doing that single point. That being said, it really helps capture like the eye and focus instead of just like, a generalized focus area. If you are new to concert photography, I would highly recommend trying out some of the auto focus options that your camera has just to help you like have something less to worry about, I guess. That being said, you might like capture a face in the background that's sharp when the person in front of you is not. So really just like play around with what you're comfortable with. But I love using the pinpoint autofocus. Um, it just allows me to have control and it is a lot of work. I will say that if you are changing and adjusting and moving around a lot, but it allows you to get those sharp photos. So that's why I recommend that. Okay. That was a lot. I feel like I went through a lot, but I hope that that helps. Those are my new settings. I'm going to put them up on the screen right now. Hopefully that gave you a little bit of background of what each one does too. So you have that going into your next shoot and you know why it's set up that way. But let me know if you disagree with any of my settings. I'm always happy to hear what people are shooting with and maybe why I should change my settings. I love learning about camera settings, but you don't have to be like a gearhead or a nerd to use these settings. Like you don't, 
I feel like settings get very overwhelming for people. So I hope that I made this a little bit more easy to understand, but also in depth enough that it helps you set up your camera properly and like for whatever you might want to shoot. So at your next gig, I hope this helps. Um, I am trying to do more YouTube videos on music photography specifically. So if you have anything that you want me to mention or do a video about, let me know in the comments and I'm always here to answer any questions that you have. So feel free to comment, DM me on Instagram, um, and hopefully I will see you guys in the pit. See you next one. Bye.